Um, for, for those of you wonderful, well, we'll get started here. I'm very excited for tonight's meeting um, because um, as I was discussing with Des just a little bit ago, uh, my name's Becky Hurley, for those of you that haven't met me, and there probably are quite a few because we've got a lot, a lot of new names on this list to uh, welcome into the group tonight. Um, but what we were discussing is that most of us, because we started, throughout everything that's going on and haven't been able to meet people in person. So we've got a special guest tonight that has done a lot of in-person uh, parties and she's gonna be sharing some of those tips with us. So I'm very excited to, uh, to uh, glean from her as well. I'll be introducing her in just a few minutes here. So I am um, an artist five, just celebrated my first year anniversary with Saint, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm just having the best time. And uh, the thing that I was looking for in particular when I was looking for a new company was to uh, lock arms with some people that um, had been doing this for a while and were looking for kind of the same thing. And I really had a vision for um, helping so many women be able to, to stay home um, be with their kids if that's what they wanted to do full time um, or even part time, whether you had another job or not, and to be able to earn income right away. And that is what this company is all about. And I've fallen in love with the makeup. Um, I, I was not a big makeup person before. I was quite similar to Tracy, where we just kind of slapped some mineral makeup on and tried to make the best of it, didn't even know what brushes were for. And um, I just love the way that I that I look and I feel with this makeup on. So we want to welcome a bunch of new artists to the Girl Gang um, since the last time that we had one of these Monday night meetings. And first of all, we have uh, Rachel Busher, uh, Debbie Adams, Shelly Johnson, Dolores Iwaskow, I'm probably pronouncing that one wrong, Shannon Wilson, Leona Gislo, Gislason, um, Jocelyn Corteau, these were easy when I was looking at the list before. <laughs> Shelly Bullock, Amanda Westendorp, Lana McGolvin, Allison Miller, Suzanne Fortier, Mary Louise Kearns, Christy Murray, Shannon Rack, Kim Simpson, Diane McEckern, Krista Holden, Bryn Horley, Marissa Han, Lindsay Haynes, and Mel O'Keefe. So welcome, welcome, welcome to that list of gals new to our girl gang. And I hope you're off to a fantastic start. And this is going to give you absolutely some great tools to put um, into your arsenal when you get out there and start introducing this to people. So I wanna introduce um, Heather Burge. I've not met Heather before. Um, she is um, an artist eight. She started her Saint journey four and a half years ago as a busy boutique owner and the mama to two girls in Savannah, Georgia. And I love your accent. As uh, she sold her boutique, um, that she owned for 15 plus years to focus on Saint in 2019. So that's exciting. She is currently an artist eight. So she's in the top 16 of the company and leads a team over 3,500 artists in it. And um, she's sold close to 200,000 as an artist in her career. She has 54 directs and she's personally enrolled. 75 people in that time. It is amazing what can happen when you have been in a business for long enough to get some traction going. So Heather, I'm so excited to have you come on and, um, and share some amazing stuff with us. Oh, that was so awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm so impressed by you guys and I'm so honored to be here. Um, it really makes my heart so happy to see these connections. This is really the best part about the business is really the community, um, especially within the team. So welcome to all you newbies. I saw a bunch of the names. I think Shannon and Rachel, I'm trying to see who else was brand new and they're already on here. So that's awesome. Um, so thanks for having me tonight, guys. And I'm excited to share my top 10 tips <laughs> for in-person. And it'll kind of encompass everything from a one-on-one -on -one makeover to um you know, even doing like expos or boutique pop-ups, because obviously as things hopefully start to ease up a little bit with COVID, I just heard the borders open, right? How, are most of you guys um, in Canada or is it a pretty good mix on, on the team? Yeah, most of it. Okay, awesome. Well, we're down, down here in the South. We've 
been a little bit blessed to have it be relatively open here for a bit, but I truly feel, um, and with every fiber of my being that as all businesses, you know, kind of have their, their shifts and their ebbs and flows, I truly do feel that that is what people are going to be craving now more than ever when they can safely feel ready to do so is that in-person connection, both with team, um, you know, but especially with the magic of this makeup, because there is nothing better than seeing a woman light up liter literally like <laughs> with the makeup, but then also seeing her face light up when she sees herself. And it just really helps to solidify the power of this makeup. And it can be really hard to really get that experience when you're working virtually. Um, I think my doggies growl at it. So sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to uh, just dive right in and hopefully maybe these 10 little tips will um, allow, if you're taking notes, allow you to kind of easy do some bullet points. Um, and okay, everyone's from Canada. Okay, you're, you're from Canada, Shannon. Okay, awesome. That is amazing. So, okay, so the most important thing to remember, which how long do I have, Becky? What's my, what's my time frame? How long do y'all like to keep it? Um, well, I think we're trying to get, we have a habits for success meeting starting in about 35 minutes. So oh, yeah, 15, 20. Okay, awesome. That's perfect. That's my, that's my sweet spot, but I want to make sure I didn't need to, you know, stick it within or by nine or anything like that. No, 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 no. Nope, so, that's perfect. Okay, awesome. So the first thing is, um, I'm actually going to use the words of Cat Bear Child. Tracy was in a chat. Um, probably, uh, probably heard her say this today. But monkey see, monkey do. I know that sounds really simple, but it's it basically describes duplication in a nutshell. And you have to keep that in mind, honestly, in everything you do in your business. But especially if you're doing an in-person makeover or an in-person party. Um, or a class demo, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, you really have to keep in mind to keep it simple because ultimately what your customer sees you do, first of all, is probably how she's going to do her makeup, right? Like the palette you use, the brushes, you know, if you sell just the quad, she may not have enough room, you know, for that. Um, so everything from what you actually physically recommend to her to your setup, you do not need a, you know, beautiful space. You don't need, like if you're having an in-person class, you don't need a crazy, you know, catered event with like fresh flowers and this beautiful, um, you know, perfectly done kitchen or anything like that. Because guess what? People feel like they could never do that. So the more replicatable you can make it, the simpler you can do it. And we can kind of get out of your own head about having everything to be perfect, meaning the application style, um, the, again, your setting, all of those things. That's part about this makeup is you can wipe it off and try a different color. Um, you can, in fact, actually, we'll get to that, that um, another tip in just a second, but just remember to keep it simple because that is what will duplicate for your customer. But more importantly, when and if she decides to join you as an artist, and in, in my experience, about 10% of your customers will want to link arms with you in the business. It probably jumps to about 20 if you get bold and just invite them and ask. I think that's exactly what y'all are experiencing on this team is because y'all know how to get it done and <laughs> boldly invite people into this magical community. Uh, but really what I find is that once people become an artist, that's what they're going to do. The way that you did the makeover, the way that you hosted the class, that's the way that they're going to do it. So Number one, monkey see, monkey do, what you do duplicates. So number two is don't forget to take a before and after. This is huge for just a ton of reasons. So first of all, you can literally show them the transformation once you're done. And it's so hard to remember at first, you guys, like I promise you, you will forget and it's okay. I forgot for a lot of them, but now, I mean, there's no telling how many hundreds of in-person makeovers I've done. And I can even go back through my, um, my layout app on my phone and see them all. And it's really cool. Cause I can dive in and pick my, my artists, like my, the girls that have decided to join my team. And I'm like, look at this crazy before and after from three years ago or whenever it was. So, um, take it before and after, and even beyond that text it to them. Um, whether they purchase on the spot or not, whether it's a class or not, when you send them that text message and say like, Hey, this is Tracy with Saint, you, um, you know, you're, you're making that connection. They have a way to contact you. Um, if you're not for some reason comfortable with sharing your, your cell phone, which I even share my cell phone with customers and, and with my artists and, you know, I've got a lot of them. So 
you know, I, I wouldn't shy away from doing that, but if for some reason you don't feel comfortable, you could obviously do it on social media as well, but just send them that before and after, because they're going to be staring at it. They'll be able to kind of see the difference. They'll probably show it to their friends. They might just hit like forward on that text and send it over to somebody to be like, oh my gosh, or they'll post it on social media and ding, ding, ding. If they do that, you've got a, an amazing potential artist and you should probably sign that girl, <laughs> sign that girl up right away. Um, so by doing that before and after you're really even equipping her, should she decide to dive right in as an artist. And I've actually had that happen before where they've maybe purchased the makeup very quickly decided to join. And then guess what? They've got a before and after with an experienced artist. If you've done it before, um, it, with the right lighting and all of that. So number tip number two is take a before and after and send it to them. Um, oh, uh, side note, this is not on my list, <laughs> but if you guys haven't downloaded the app, the Saint app, it is genius. It's amazing and such an incredible tool that is given to us by corporate. And I really encourage you all to play around with it. We're all figuring this thing out together. We really, you know, none of us exactly know the best way to leverage it. But what I was going to say is also while you've got their cell, you can actually upload your, um, their contact into your Saint app and you can send them all kinds of stuff. You can send them a link to your, um, you know, your, your party link for the month. Um, I texted my customers to let them know about the, um, the incentive that happened for the birth, for the customer birthday or customer celebration. So use the app, leverage the app and use it, especially for texting or, you know, messaging. You can also message on social media. So sorry about that squirrel, but it's an important one. So number three, um, have you guys seen the order form? So when I say not the ones that are on the Saint website, I don't even know what those look like. They're, they've never been very good. They Do you guys like, I can only see a couple of you guys, but raise your hands if, when I say the Saint order forms, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. I think Tracy does. Okay, good. So if you don't, this is one of those like hidden gems, Kelly Nordfelt, who's an artist seven, um, Saint sideline sister of mine. She created the most beautiful, really simple, um, Saint order forms that has everything very clearly listed out on them. There are two pages, one, you know, run front and back. If you do it, um, if you're, if you're in the team kiss Facebook page, which don't necessarily Anyway, you don't necessarily have to join that. I'll send it to Tracy just so you guys, in case she doesn't know where it is, she can get it out to you guys. But you guys, that order form is straight up magic, especially if you do an in-person makeover class, like where you have stations. I'll show you my party in a box setup in a minute because you can actually have a physical piece of paper, which a lot of people really enjoy, you know, being able to either take notes or, um, you know, be able to mark up. I put a little star by the colors that I use when I do an in-person makeover, or if I'm doing my little party in a box class that I'll tell you about in a minute, I'll star the colors that I'm using for them. And then I learned from Katie Martin, another amazing artist seven on our team, um, that she actually totals up when she does an in-person class on the very back side of it. She'll total it by makeup, tools, and skincare. So instead of seeing this big, scary total, she's breaking it down and she's explaining that the makeup you'll probably replace every three to six months, depending on whatever it is, the, your tools are going to last, you know, a while they've got a really long shelf life. And then the skincare is six months or so plus. And so she kind of breaks down that investment. And then she asks for the sale. She's like, okay, great. Um, and with those order forms, you just say, all right, so just fill out the top and the bottom, you know, back part of the order form. Um, and I'll get this order submitted for you. Um, and just kind of assume that sale. And of course, if there's any pushback from that, you know, like, oh, I want to, you know, take home and think about it or, you know, ask my husband or save up. That's okay too. You know, you can, you can let them do it, but you never know unless you kind of give them that, um, that invitation. Um, and when you've spent that time with them, you've earned it. You know, it's not like you're charging for the makeover or anything like that. So you've earned it and you have the right to ask for the sale. And that's where sending them that before and after can also open up that line of communication to just touch base when and if they don't purchase. Though I will say most of my in-person makeovers do wind up purchasing. It's almost always a time or a money issue. I can only think of a, a handful that either just really didn't love the makeup, um, you know, but most of the time people really do love it and they want to buy it. So number three is order forms, print them for any in-person stuff. It's, it's super easy. Okay. Number four, um, is let them do it. So, um, are any of you guys, um, beauty professionals, like actual makeup artists, 
um, or beauty pros. Okay, Michelle is, she's raising her hand. So I'm sure, I don't know if you've run into this at all, Michelle, but sometimes when you are a beauty pro or if you are really good at applying your makeup, people automatically assume, well, I mean, obviously you can do it, um, but I could never do that. And so allowing them to do at least half their face. So if you're just doing one person, um, you can literally just do half their face and then let them do the other half and kind of mirror what you did, um, which is wild because most of the time I actually like the side that they did better. They'll either do it like because they kind of know their face structure a little bit more because again, I'm not a pro makeup artist, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know how to paint my numbers with this makeup. <laughs> so I make sure they know that I'm not a pro. And if you are a pro, that's okay too. But you know, you can explain to them that this is truly something that's the beauty of this makeup is this is something that they can, you know, physically take and do themselves and have that professionally done makeup look without the, um, you know, without the, the knowledge of how to do it. <laughs> you can pretty much do it blindfolded. Um, so number four is let them do it. Um, and I think y'all got that there. So yeah, so you do half, they do half. Um, and when we get to, maybe I'll just do that one next. Number five, the party in a box <laughs> setup is my favorite way to do an in-person class. And um, basically what that is, I can even show you guys, is I, um, if you're like a leader, I would say maybe four um, or above, or if you have a group of gals in your area, um, I don't love, I'm not big on, I came from another background in um, another company that was big on making a bunch of investments to like keep you in the company, kind of like how much money can you spend so you're locked in sort of Thing and it sort of broke. And I'm not that I'm like, don't spend money until you're making money. And even then invest smartly on things that can build your business or better yet, like set a goal, like this ring light that I'm using. This was my goal when I hit artist four. I don't think I got it until I was artist five, but um, that was, I was like, I'm going to get that ring light when I hit artist four. Um, could I have afforded the hundred dollar ring light? Sure. Did I, was it, you know, more simple for me to do makeovers in the beginning in the first, I guess it took me Let's see, how long did it take me? Um, about six months to hit artist, um, artist five. Um, and in that time frame, I operated without a ring light and just did the best that I could. So it's not like you need it. That was me keeping it simple. Um, but this party in a box is actually relatively affordable. You can just get a basket. This looks bigger than you guys can, <laughs> than, it, than it is. So you can get a basket or a box. And what I do is I got these um, cute little mirrors from Target. I used to have these light up mirrors and I realized that they, they almost were ineffective. I've heard that like five below, I don't know if y'all have five below up in Canada. These are from Target. Um, but they can be seriously so simple. These are cute and pink, very easy. And I also have, I don't think they're in this particular box for some reason, but they, um, also have these like mats that are like almost like a plastic mat that I'll put down. And, um, that way, like if any makeup gets like, if I'm doing a pop-up in someone's beautiful dining room, I don't want to necessarily get it on their, <laughs> on their, um, on their nice table. And then, um, I keep my brushes. I realize this is literally a clutch box. And I think my, my party in a box is kind of scattered here, but um, I keep my brushes in the clutch box, my extra ones, and I use my hostess rewards to save up for those. Um, so I have all my extra brushes that I've gotten with my rewards and I, they're not all the same. Like they're still the old gold ones. I just explained to them that the, you know, the rebrand has happened and I kind of give them a little bit of scoop on that. Um, but essentially I have usually when I have my stuff together a little bit more, I have everything in this one box that I can pick up and take to my classes, or I can loan it out to any of my other local artists. So it's a really great resource, um, for your team. So, um, Tracy, that's a great question with how many mirrors do I carry? And that will lead me into, let's see, we're in, was that, that was number five. So I think this is number six, which is. I don't recommend doing any more than six people at an in-person class. Eight tops if you feel really, really, really comfortable. The reason I say that is you will get very overwhelmed, even if you are an experienced artist, but especially at the very beginning, I think like four people is a great number. And um, the reason that I, I think four or six is kind of a magic number is most hostesses can get four to six gals ever to their house. They feel like, 
oh, okay, I can do that. Like, I don't have to pack it. Like it's, it manages expectations for them. It manages expectations for you. You can coach them to say, I only have four spots or I only have six spots. Would you like to take one? So it kind of creates that little bit of urgency and it's real because there's literally only six mirrors. <laughs> so I think I have eight, Tracy, to answer your question because I will do them um, that big. I actually recently did a really great class for my mom and she genuinely had more friends that were interested. And so we broke it into two different sessions because I told her, I was like, I really don't want to do this with more than more than eight people. <laughs> so um, that, that way you're not overwhelmed. You can take your time in that instance. The way I set it up to answer somebody else's question is yes, I give everybody at least two brushes. And I, I usually will, um, I'll kind of depend it on their face shape. Like I'll give them a B square blush and bronzer and a detail brush or a buff brush um, and a blend brush or something like that. So everybody's got kind of like an application one and some metric of blending. And I just make an educated guess on who needs what. And sometimes I'll switch them around like that. Um, so number six is no more than six is my, that's my, um, that's my tip. You can, you can certainly try. Um, and that will kind of lead more into number seven, which is how to do group, um, you know, things like expos, which again, I realized probably for COVID, we're a little bit a ways away from that in Canada with having like those big, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like where everybody kind of comes together um, and does those expos. I did quite a few of them when I first started. And if you do choose to do them, just keep in mind that they're more about building exposure and building the brand in wherever, whatever community that you're in. That's the amazing thing about Saint in Canada is it's still so new that it is a great opportunity for leaders to team up um, when you have that, op that option, um, you know, to just spread the word about the brand, but kind of manage expectations that you probably won't like get a ton of traction, like it, it, in terms of orders, like you're not necessarily going to have like, I remember at the very beginning, I would have like six or eight artists of mine come thinking like, oh, we're all going to make bank. And we would have like two orders between us. <laughs> but what we did do is we collected email addresses um, or social media. Like we would do like a um, how, guess how many tens are in this, um, you know, in a little bin, or um, we would do a brush giveaway if they filled out their information. So we're collecting the leads um, we, one time I know we even stepped it up where we at, we had, a, it was like a little survey. Um, and I think one of the questions was, would you be interested in hosting a class to get free makeup? Um, and then would you be interested in learning more about the artist program? So to be entered into that giveaway, we were kind of qualifying those leads and then that could then turn into an individual in-person makeover or something along those lines after the fact. So expos are they're, they're worth it if you manage your expectations around the purpose of it. But I do want you to kind of also go back to the first, you know, number one, which is the keep it simple monkey see monkey do. I've heard of people spending a fortune on them and doing these elaborate setups and all these things. And people feel like that's something that they couldn't do themselves. And so sometimes when we as leaders show up in a way that doesn't seem, you know, like, something they want to do. Like, they're like, I don't know if I want that job to like set up this elaborate thing. Right. So just kind of keep that in mind that it does not have to be crazy. And our branding is beautiful and the makeup honestly sells itself. Um, so sticking, um, with that kind of number seven, something I like a little bit better than an expo is a boutique pop-up, um, or a spa pop-up is another one. Um, if you guys know, or if you have your own, um, you know, a spa or, um, you know, if you're an esthetician or something like that, or if you have friends or especially customers, in my experience, they almost always have to be a customer in order to be successful. Just like your hostess is like, if you have an online hostess, that's not a customer, it's usually not the greatest party because she's not that engaged. She hasn't tried the makeup. She's not sharing her own personal experience with it. So in my experience, if you have customers that are, um, you know, that boutique owners or they're maybe they own a hair salon or something like that. I've done all of them. I've done hair salons. I've done um, blow dry bars. I've done um, salon spas. I've done boutiques. They're awesome. You do have to remember a little bit that kind of, you know, managing expectations. I find if you get the butt in the chair, everybody wants it done. So like if you can maybe convince one of the, the employees um, you know, or, um, have a friend or like a wingman, like have one of your artists come and y'all can play with like the new eyeshadow colors or something like that in person. Once somebody's in the chair, seeing it done, everybody wants it. And you might only be able to do like, when I do them, I can only do 
like four to six people again in a day, which is going back to that party box. Why I love that. Cause I can knock those out in a two hour increment and have, you know, usually five out of the six order a couple hundred dollars worth. And so it's a well worth my time, you know, to show up. Whereas if I spend all day at a boutique, again, it's the exposure, but I might only do six or so, um, makeovers in like a six hour period. <laughs> so it can be a little bit, you know, of a long day, but it certainly has been worth it in my experience. And I've definitely gotten artists, um, you know, from, from that, because they get that face-to-face -face interaction and they can see the makeup and, you know, fall in love with, with all of the things. So, um, so I would say I like pop-ups better than, um, better than expos. Okay. Bev has, and I don't, I call you Bev and I don't even know, I'm like, I love how I'm shortening everything, but I feel like Kate calls you Bev. So I'm going to do it. But Bev says, do you sanitize the makeup or use a little bit on the plate for each lady? So that is a great question. So yes, I, um, so I wipe down, I use alcohol wipes for my, I have the artist palette and I wipe down my artist kit, which is separate from my, you know, my personal makeup. So I usually keep it, you know, pretty clean in between whoever I'm doing basically. And I wipe the palette down and then I use, um, again, y'all, I'm going to wear all my stuff. It's like, I have it in two different, two different <laughs> party in a boxes. Cause I'm like, where are my little plates? I ordered these plates off of Amazon that have, they're like little paint palettes. Um, and I use like a little metal scooper scraper thing. And I scrape the tiniest little bit in, um, in each of the palettes, I do the two highlights, a contour, um, usually three lip and cheeks. Cause they usually will get at least two of the three. Um, and you know, a cream illuminator if they're there, maybe a little bit of bronzer. Um, so I do that. So I sanitize that and, and scrape it into the plate. Um, and Melissa said some, um, might have missed the first part, but someone new likely won't have multiple brushes to hand out at all. So what do you recommend for that? So exactly, Melissa. So that's why I say like that party in a box concept is something you probably want to build up to when you had the sales to gain a good bit of rewards. Um, you know, I didn't buy, literally did not buy any of those brushes or any of the things that I did. I just used my rewards to slowly, but surely build them over time. But if you think about it, you've got two, if you've got $2,000 parties, that's four half off items, that's eight brushes right there. So you can do your, you know, your two sets of like a blendy one and a, um, you know, maybe two of each one, like two details, two 30 seconds and four blush brushes, something like that. So you've got a little bit of variety going on. Um, and you know, but you've got a little bit of an excess. And again, I love to store them in these, um, in the clutch box. I guess this one would be good. These are the microfiber boxes that would be probably good too. So, um, definitely don't stress if you're brand new, do not <laughs> go invest in something like that yet. Um, just work up like one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, um, you know, just kind of take it small and build up to it. Um, and then, you know, just kind of go from there rather than trying to do the party in a box. So I hope that answers your question, Melissa. Um, yes, so Tracy, I can definitely um, send pics and I actually have um, an Amazon, um, like a list on Amazon, I think to the original stuff that I bought. There's maybe some stuff that I don't, like there's lighted mirrors and stuff like that on there that I don't usually use. Um, I just heard one of my girls, um, one of my direct artists told me she got these like metal plates, I think from the dollar store and somehow they were magnetic. And so she had, she like, I guess, melted down her extra tins. I'm going to have to get her to send me a picture of that because she like magnetized the tins somehow on like a metal tray. Sounded awesome. And she said, it's working great for her. So <laughs> we're all learning this together. Um, okay, perfect. So I'm going to keep going. Hopefully sort of okay on time here. Um, okay. So, um, that was party in a box. Um, so then actually the next step, which I think is eight is, um, use your rewards. You guys like be smart with your rewards. Like I, I think, because again, I was so skittish to make that investment that I still to this day, like I, I kind of poured them and I save them and I try to use them for things that I can leverage to continue building my business. So I would say most of my rewards, and I'm not a top, top seller. I sell, um, you know, between two and 4,000 every month in the U S which is, you know, for you guys, so, you know, 
anyway, you get the idea. So I can sometimes hit the 40, 40% commission bracket. Most of the time I, I'm sitting pretty in the 35. So I'm not like a top, top seller. Um, but I use every bit of the rewards that I can to, you know, to invest back in the business. So that's my number eight tip is to use your freebies to do it. And as long as it takes you, that is okay. Don't stress about it. Just let that be your kind of goal to continue building. Um, I find, especially if you are goal-driven like me, that even having those little small things to work towards will motivate you to do the other hard things in your business and to continue those aspects to, to grow your business. Um, okay. So, um, number nine is, um, create time slots. And what I mean by that is you can go as simple as like, um, you know, on your Facebook page or, you know, wherever you share, say something like, um, Hey guys, I'm doing makeovers at my house um, all day this Tuesday. I have two spots left, 11 o'clock and two o'clock. Who wants them? And I guarantee you, people will be like, oh, I want one. I'll take the two o'clock. And I completely forgot that Molly Goodman, who is one of my top leaders, she's she's an amazing, amazing artist six, basically artist seven. She's got structure, just not quite there yet, but she's she's incredible and amazing leader. That she was one of those people. She didn't even, she had seen one of my videos, wasn't even that interested in trying. She was like, oh, that's cool. And then she saw my post with that kind of like sense of urgency and a strong call to action that I had a spot available. And she was like, Oh, okay, I'll take one. And she did it. And she came and she tried to make up, she bought the makeup and a few months later, um, wanted to become an artist. So the power of that, that kind of like limited time slot, and maybe, you know, for you busy moms, um, you know, again, if, even if you have kids like running around your house, it's okay. That means they can do it when their kids too, right. Or like bring your kids. I now do it. I'm like, bring your, you know, if they're old enough, I'll be like, bring, bring your kids. Well, they can swim in the pool while we play makeup on the back porch, like stuff like that. Like you can, you know, make it again, simple and laid back. They absolutely love that. Um, but when you, when you do that and you block off either a day, maybe where you have a babysitter or, um, you know, just a set time either somewhere else or in your home you can block off those, those spots. Um, something else I actually use now, um, uh, you know, as a leader, I time block everything. So I use my, my iCal phone and of course it ties to my computer so I can pull it up anywhere. And so I like down to the day I, and I even like, this is kind of next level stuff, but <laughs> For some of you leaders or anybody who's super busy, um, I literally put like my personal things in there, like my devotional or plan day, um, my girls getting on the buses on there. When I have Zooms or calls with leaders, like here's here's the training right here for tonight. Um, I time block it in and I use an app called Calendly, which is um, free for one like little scheduler. Um, and actually the very first one when it was free was a, a boutique pop-up I did. And I set up the free one to where um, basically what it does is it creates a link and the boutique had the swipe up option on their stories. And I just sent them that link to my Calendly that hooks to my calendar. So it knows like when I'm available and when I'm not. And it, they shared that link on their stories, like swipe up to book your appointment. And within like one story post, I had three of the six spots filled. And then slowly but surely leading up to the event, they did it. Um, you know, they, they all filled up and I, and I was, um, I was fully booked with that one. So Calendly is a powerful tool, definitely for scheduling. It's a little bit more high level. Again, if you're brand new or like technology kind of freaks you out a little bit, like don't, it's okay. You don't have to do that. I, I would even say, honestly, the simple, I've got these spots available might even be more effective, but if you are really busy and you're worried about how to navigate that time crunch, or if you just really want to leverage your time a little bit more with scheduling like one-on-one -on -one calls with your team or trying to keep it all together, then I definitely recommend you look into something like Calendly because it's it's definitely a really great, it's been an awesome resource, especially with in-person stuff. Um, okay, Jeannie has a really good question. How much time do I take, do I do for a makeover? So if you can't tell, I'm a talker. <laughs> so I have tried and tried to like keep it to 30 minutes. I can't, I just can't, whether I'm in person at a boutique, if I'm, you know, here at my house, if I'm doing a, you know, bunch of people in makeover, 
I can't, I can't do it. Maybe you can, <laughs> but um, I would say it takes me about 45 minutes to do a, a really good, solid um, in-person makeover. Um, and I usually at those boutiques, I'll block off an hour just because I want to be able to really talk to them and get to know them and not feel rushed and not, you know, maybe if they're a little bit late or something, I don't want, I, again, I don't want them to rush. And I just, I know me that I'll be better <laughs> in that scenario. So again, I've, I've, I remember one of my artists um, did a, a boutique pop-up and I helped her out and she did like 10 or 12 makeovers in one day at a boutique. And I was like, girl, I have no idea how you just did that. Cause I could not have done it that quick, but <laughs> props to you. So um, yeah, I mean, just pop in. I'm, we are all loving this information. No, I want you to keep going. I just want to remind anybody that is in the habits for success, jump over there in 10 minutes or nine minutes. Well, I want you to keep going though, because this is being recorded and it is such amazing information. Everybody's going to want to do this, but the habits for success will not be recorded. So anybody that's registered for that run on over there in uh, eight minutes. Awesome. And we're yeah. really on the last one. So I definitely want to open it up for, for questions and things like that too. So uh, yes. we'll probably use every bit, every bit of it, but I can, I can end on, on one that I really truly believe my, for any of you like kind of systems, you know, kind of looking for that magic way to integrate in person into your, like your onboarding system, for example, or bringing on a new artist, or if you want a powerful duplicatable tool, if you're brand new, um, or if you've been a saint artist for over four years, like me, and that is one little phrase and that's, can I borrow your face? Can I borrow your face? And what I mean by that is there's a million different ways you can do it. If you are brand new, you need to learn how to do this makeup on somebody other than yourself, right? So you need to borrow some faces. So I recommend maybe use the app um, to send, like you can even upload your before and after to the app and send it, you know, go through your contacts. If you're brand new, go through your contacts here, sync them on there and really think about it. Don't make excuses. Like who would like this makeup? Like who do you know in your phone that... I mean, and if she's a woman, she's probably going to love it. And you just add her to the app and then just invite her to say, you know, listen, I just decided to, you know, join as an artist with this company. Um, I really need to learn and I have no idea what I'm doing. Would you let me borrow your face? Um, this here's an example of, of the makeup with my before and after. Well, guess what? Like, they're not going to say no, especially if you say like, um, like I've also done like on a, a mommy post, like I'm looking for models, you know, for my portfolio, or I'm looking for people to, you know, for before and afters and things like that. The people eat it up. They love to be shown, uh, maybe not everybody, but like, if they do, they also would probably be a good artist too, if they're the type that aren't afraid already to put themselves out there in that way. So, you know, whether it's direct one, one on one when you're first building your business or just diving into this in person stuff for the first time, which is pretty much all of you guys. Um, but then also, um, like I said, if you've been an artist for forever, I do, I do recommend you. And if you're especially if you're going for the trip, because that's actually I did qualify the first month from doing that. I did a post in a mommy group that said I'm looking for models and I shared some before and afters and um, I had multiple people come forward um, for in person makeovers. So those are my 10 tips. I could probably keep going. And I certainly, um, okay. So Shannon, this, uh, Shannon has a very good question, which is, she says, no one has expressed this, but what about the concerns about COVID? This pandemic has scared a lot of people and to share personal products equipment. Do we have to go back to doing in-person parties or can we continue doing this online? Or do you think that will start our business? Heck no, Shannon. Absolutely. You know, everybody's different. And I recommend doing, I, I recommend trying all, all of them, really. I mean, you don't have to do everything perfectly, but you will find a sweet spot that works for you and your tribe, your city, your friend group. You know, I know it's a very different environment that we're in right now, and everybody has different feelings about being vaccinated or not and all of those things. And so, you know, you probably know your people and your tribe and your situation better than anybody else. And absolutely, you can still build your business doing online classes. I mean, there are people selling tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to make up using reels or, you know, in leveraging TikTok and Instagram and things like that. Um, so, you know, so there's tons, there's no wrong or right way. I would never tell you don't do this or do this instead, but for anybody that is able to borrow faces, um, I absolutely, you know, I, I would say just, just take baby steps towards leveraging it. Make sure your people feel comfortable, uh, make sure you feel comfortable <laughs> and by comfortable. I don't mean like fear, like don't let fear hold you back. Don't be afraid to do it or 
afraid to get the makeup wrong or anything like that. Those are not good reasons. Fear for your health or fear, fear for your family's health. That that's a, that's a whole other scenario. And I obviously would, would honor those, um, honor those concerns. And thankfully there are a million ways to do this business. So great question. Um, okay. Any, um, any other questions? Okay, uh, Lonnie says, would you encourage doing practice runs with friends that are already using the makeup just to get comfortable applying makeup to someone else's face? Sure, yeah, definitely. Plus, like I had one of my best friends um, who actually was very COVID cautious for uh, pretty much the whole time. And so finally she said she wanted to do an in-person makeover um, and try the makeup four years later and she bought it and now loves it. But, um, you know, it can be a great way. I know of a leader, another artist seven, Shay Taylor, who actually is currently battling COVID right now. So keep her in your prayers. But she, um, she actually, the way she does her virtual business is she books a class after they get their makeup to make sure that they're using it. Or but when I say class, like she books them like a one-on-one -on -one after either virtually or in person to make sure that they love it. So that's another way to do it too. Good question. Love that. I have a question. Sure. Um, I have done a couple in person just with the people that I, I, I know quite well. And what I did, I just want to ask you your opinion on this. This was what, kind of when I was brand new. I actually had them stand in front of the window, do the whole selfie and everything on my phone. And I, I color match them that way with the swatches so that they could see that. How do you color match when you're in person with people? Do you do that? Don't, um, you know, it's so funny, Molly that I was talking about earlier, one of my leaders, she loves the swatches. I think that's just her, the way her brain works. I don't like, I don't, because it, for me, it's like, I, I feel like I, I'm more of a, just try. And if it doesn't work, I'll just wipe it off and, you know, try something else. And y'all fun fact. So you'll die. Guess what colors I wore for a year before I became an artist. And then my full first year as an artist, what my main color was, you'll die. RF. <laughs> just RF, no brightener, no other, just <laughs> RF, like walnut or something. So, you know, I got like most of my, <laughs> most of my makeovers wrong in the beginning. Um, another one of my artist sixes, Colleen, um, she, at the very beginning, we, we had these like pre-built palettes, which was actually kind of nice, but there were only four. And the medium was sunlit stone, pink grapefruit and pearl. So guess what I sold to like 50% of my customers, the medium palette, and they got sunlit stone <laughs> Be grateful and pull pearl. So Colleen promptly returned it and didn't try it again until we, um, until I saw her in person actually. And then she loved it. She joined, she, you know, anyway, the rest is history. So it's pretty crazy. Oh, that's an awesome story. I love those kinds of stories. That's no, fabulous. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? You know, this was invaluable. Um, Yay. I learned so much tonight and I am, I personally am going to continue to mine. I live in a really rural location and I just really like that after so many years of running around doing parties. That's just, I, I love the, I love that we have the 30 day money back. I love that we have the shade swap. So don't overthink this. Any, everybody, I love the advice that you gave that, you know what, this is your business. You, you do what makes you feel good about it. You can build it in so many different ways. And, um, I, I do love, and I love the idea of just having people over at my house too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've been talking about a lot, a lot about you, me and three and bringing people on over. Ooh, look at that language. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember who came up with that, but it's fantastic. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to, but I, I really love the idea of getting into the boutiques and the, my, my son is a hairstylist and I could for sure go and hang out there sometimes um, little boutique stores would be fabulous. And um, yeah, just so many great ideas. I got lots of stuff going. I, I took oh, like pages of notes here. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm oh, so really looking forward to going back over the, uh, the recording as well and writing stuff down. And as you guys continue to have questions, oh, so Leona just got another question here. But has yeah. anyone done a guy's, has anybody done a guy's face? I've seen guys faces out there on social media. Me too. I have not done, I have not had anybody ask for that. So no, I have not, but I'm, I'm actually really surprised that we don't have more men artists. I really am because when you go online and look at lots of different makeovers, there's so many guys doing makeovers. Oh yeah. And this is like made for that. Cause it's like, you know, buildable and the cream. Yeah. And it can yeah. literally sculpt faces. So yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah. So I would love to see more men on on the team as well. Well, thank you again so much. So nice to meet you. Can't wait to see you in person. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm you too. Now, are you coming, Becky? To who else? I am. I'm registered, but I'm still not a hundred percent certain with just with everything that's going on here. I want to be able to get back home safely and. <laughs> Oh, I completely understand. You guys are definitely in a rock and a hard place. So yeah. I hope that I get to see some of you guys there. Um, it'll definitely, there be, will definitely be some, some of us there for sure. All right. So just to uh, close up tonight, I wanted to do just a couple more reminders of, um, oh, so many people saying thank you. This was very well received. Gosh, that was amazing. Um, that uh, we've, of course, got the Team Destiny Bingo is still going on. We're in our second month of the Bingo Challenge and the um, Artist Challenge for ACE. So make sure that you know exactly what those qualifications there is over on Telegram. There was a post that came out about that. I will post, once we get this recording up, I'll post the link for that in, um, in uh, the girl gang as well. So great guys. And look at that. We made it with just one minute over. So everybody jump on over to Habits for Success if you're registered for that. Heather, thanks again so much. We really appreciate you. It's my pleasure. Thank y'all so much. All right. Night, everybody. <laughs>